What did I make on Amazon KDP for low content books in the month of May? Take a look at the video and find out. Hello Home Bosses. My name is Nuria Corby from thehomeboss.com. Welcome to my channel, which is all about helping you to make money online. And in this channel, we talk a lot about publishing low content books on Amazon KDP, which is things like notebooks, journals, planners, that kind of thing. They're books where you don't need to write anything, but it's for the person who buys the books to fill them in in some way. So it could be log books as well. I also publish children's books. And for those of you who are interested, my children's book course will be out very soon. And uh, today I want to talk to you about my income report for last month, for May 2021. And the months of uh, May, June, July, they can be a bit slow in a lot of businesses. So let's have a look and see what I did. And after I tell you my income report and we have a look at my um, spend on ads as well, because this isn't all profit. You have to take away what I spend on ads as well. And after I show you, I will talk to you about how I think you can do this too. So let's have a look on the screen share and see what I made in May. So here we are on my dashboard. I use KDP Champ to check my royalties because I think there is a lot of information on KDP Champ that you might find really useful. I find it really useful, so that's what I'm using. But you can also check your royalties on Amazon KDP itself. And for that, you would go on your KDP dashboard and just click on reports and you can see your sales there as well. But I like to use KDP Champ. I also use Get Book Report, but I find that KDP Champ goes into much more detail. So let's have a look what I made in May. So you can see here May, May's total book royalties were $2,857.07. KDP Champ also tells me um, what I've made so far this month. So this month we're already up on $1,842 and I'm predicted about $3,947 for this month. We'll see if that's correct. I don't know whether that will be the case. This is just a projection, so it's an estimate and that can change. But if my average daily royalties continue like this, then that is what's predicted for this month. But let's have a look at May because this is the one we're talking about. So May was just under $3,000, $2,857 to be precise. And you can see how the royalties are very up and down each day. It's not really very consistent. You can see there on the um, 18th of May, it was a lot lower. And then on the 20th, I had a very low day as well. But then we had a really good start to May. On the 1st of May, I earned $168 just on that day. And I had another good day on the 27th. So overall, I'm really happy with the result for May. And also you can see here that my total books are 561 books. Now that is not a lot when you consider this is low content. I find that most low content book publishers usually have a lot more books to make this sort of money. And I'm showing you this because I really want you to know that the amount of books doesn't really matter. More books doesn't mean that you have more sales. In fact, that is that is not the way to do it. I'll tell you after I've shown you my royalties, what I think will make you book sales. And it's not the quantity of books at all. So let's have a look and see what my ad spend is, because we also have to take that away from the earnings. So total ad spend in May was £771. I only advertise in the UK because this is where I sell most of my books. So I don't really advertise on Amazon.com or anywhere else. I run my ads on Amazon.co.uk. And uh, I will say that May was 
quite difficult to get a decent amount so I spent quite a lot on ads. I mean £771 is quite a lot of money when you think about it but without spending this on ads I don't think I would have had as good a result. So for me ads are a cost of my business. There is no business in the world that doesn't spend money on promotion. It's absolutely impossible to run a business without promoting your products or whatever it is that your business is producing or whether it's services that you offer. It doesn't matter. I think every business needs to spend on promoting their business. So for me on KDP that is spending on ads. Don't forget that when I first started, I didn't run ads. I didn't run ads for about a year and I still had sales. So it is possible to have sales without running ads, but by running ads, you can really super boost your sales. And I say that uh, very carefully because running ads is something that you have to learn about. It took me a few months to learn about how to run ads and I still don't really know how to run them in the most effective way and in the best way. But so far it's working for me. I, I'm still learning about how to run ads all the time and I know that I can still improve my ads. If you have a look here, my ACOS is still high you know, it, it should be a lot lower for those ads to be more profitable. But I'm lucky that I have a good profit margin on my books. So this ACOS is still making me money. I'm still making money rather than losing money by spending on ads. So I've converted my £771.44 pence into dollars and that means that I've spent 1087 dollars and 19 cents in May on ads and if we take that away from my royalties of two thousand eight hundred and fifty seven dollars that leaves me with one thousand seven hundred and sixty nine dollars and eighty eight cents that I've made in May. So the other things that we have to take away from that are subscription costs for example, I subscribe to Creative Fabrica, I subscribe to a few tools. So all of those costs have to be taken away from this, but it's really not a lot. I would say it's under $100. So to me, that is quite a good income still for May. It's a little bit lower than my March income, for example. That was a really good income for me. And that is because May, June, July, these are the summer months and they're a little bit slower than other months of the year. But I'm still very happy with this result and uh, let me tell you what I think you can do to get this kind of result as well. So I hope you found that interesting and it just shows that you don't need to have a lot of books to make a good income on Amazon KDP. And I wanted to tell you why I think that I can make this kind of money consistently and that is because I treat this as a business. I don't just produce notebooks and upload 20, 30 notebooks a day and then hope to make some money. You have to have a better strategy than that. And in my case, I don't upload a lot of books. I've only got about 560 books, as you could see on my on my screen earlier. And that's not a lot in low content because I know people who have thousands of books and I can understand why they have so many books. And that is because when you're starting KDP, you try and upload as many books as possible because that is how it used to work. And that's how when I started, all the YouTubers were telling me, upload a lot of books, find your niches. And it was all about finding niches. And I think things have changed now. I don't think it's so much about finding the right niches. It's still important to do your keyword research and finding a good niche is always good. But I think too many people are too hung up on finding these special niches and too many people are still producing too many books thinking that by producing more books they're going to earn more money and that is not the case. The only thing that I can tell you as a 
as a good point about uploading a lot of books is that if you upload a lot of books and you put as much work into them as possible, you are bound to get better. You're bound to get better at your designs. You're bound to get better at how you research because the more often you do something, the better you get. So it is a good idea to upload as much as possible, but not because you think uploading a lot of books is going to make you more money because that is not the case. Don't spam Amazon because I see it so many times that people are uploading so many books and they're not doing their research properly. Research is not so much about finding a special niche. Research is about finding niches where you're not infringing on any copyright, you're not using any trademarked words. That is where your research really takes time and you have to put your time into it. But it's not about so much finding a, a, a niche. I get a lot of people asking me, give me a profitable niche or tell me a niche that I can publish in. I can tell you a niche right now, make a blank recipe book or make a planner or make, those are all niches, but that's not going to guarantee you sales. What's going to guarantee you sales is that you make your books with a lot of care and attention and that you really check your copyright, check your trademarks, check all the Amazon terms and conditions, which I don't think people read often enough. If you read Amazon's terms and conditions, you can find so many answers to your questions and then you can just start creating your books. And uh, have a look at my previous videos where I talk about niches, how to find niches. And it's so much better to walk into a bookstore or into a library and have a look at the books that are already out there and see what they all have in common. Have a look and see how they design their covers. What kind of fonts do they use? Those kind of observations are going to make you more successful than researching niches because niches, you know, it's important, but it's not as important as all those other things that I'm talking about. I can only tell you from my experience, that's how I do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. I tell you that all the time because it's true. And when you do your research on Amazon, have a look at the books that are making good money and try to get the essence of those books. Don't copy anything. Whatever book you make should look completely different to any other book that you're trying to get inspired by. You know, don't make your books look like other books because that's not going to bring you sales. But you can get inspired by other books, get ideas, and then build on those ideas and take it further. So what I'm going to do in my next video, I think that we're coming to a time now where it's nearly July. I don't know where this year has gone. Time has gone so quickly, but it's nearly July. So it's really time to think about quarter four because quarter four is where your book sales are really going to start happening. Even those of you who haven't had any sales yet in quarter four, I'm sure you will make sales because it's just a time where everything gets really busy and a lot of people are buying. Quarter four is a really good time for us publishers. And uh, what I'm going to do in my next video is I'm going to do a quarter four challenge. So it's going to be really good for beginners because I want to get you all to start publishing your first book. I know there are a lot of you watching who haven't published a book yet and you just need that little bit of a push to publish your first book. So for those of you, we're going to have a beginner's challenge and that means we're going to make you publish your first book. And for those of you who have already published books and you're a bit more advanced, let's make this a challenge to produce some really good books for quarter four so that this quarter four is good for all of us. Come on, we can do this all together and uh, let's prepare for quarter four so that we can all have a really good income, especially for quarter four. So I hope you like the idea. Tune into my next video and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.